Hi class, in chapter 14, we're going to look at inventory models. These models are going to help us look at how companies, organizations, institutions, you name it, how, um, how they should manage their inventory levels um, in a way to maximize their efficiency, which is, as you know, kind of a theme in this course, right? We're always trying to maximize efficiency. <clears throat> so, um, inventory don't don't think inventory only affects i don't know what i don't know what you what it is that you think uh when you think of inventory but i assume you you think of a of a retail store or a bar or you know something like that which we're going to use as examples obviously because they're easy to understand uh but inventory applies to a lot of different um, um organizations so so what is inventory right so inventories are just all those materials either semi-finished finished you name it that are going to be used uh, uh, to produce something else or to resell right so for example a restaurant um, a bottle of, of wine um, it's something that they're going to resell uh, for a profit so that would be inventory or in the case of an uh, automobile manufacturer it could be uh, steel that they're going to transform into a chassis that will eventually become a car and eventually be sold so inventory are all of those materials at any stage the companies use and process uh, to create goods and provide services um, so like I said restaurants automobile factories you know anything you can think of um, if you fail to manage your inventory properly uh, bad things are going to happen to you and they're going to happen to you very rather quickly actually uh, because of the cost involved with with inventory in many cases um, so in 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 one hand you're going to uh, you're going to be spending way too much money so you're not going to be making as much money as you should you're not going to be optimal and you are eventually going to go bankrupt because you're spending too much money in something that you shouldn't be um, spending that much money in the first place uh, on the other hand if you don't run your inventories properly you're going to uh, you're going to upset your customer base you're going to upset your customers in many ways right so imagine you have a restaurant somebody comes to your restaurant and, and they said you know somebody comes to uh, a pizza hut and they say oh i want a pizza and they say oh actually we run out of pizzas right we run out of uh, cheese for example uh well that's not gonna go well right because that's what you do you, you know you sell pizzas and you need cheese so that's going to drive consumer dissatisfaction uh and that's gonna hurt your 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 sales and eventually you're gonna go out of business so look at it whichever way you want to look at it you can look at it from the cost perspective or you can look at it from the consumer perspective but if you don't manage your inventory properly um, you will go bankrupt <laughs> in this chapter we are going to look at a whole bunch of models we're going to look at six seven models um, uh, as i'm as i'm uh, uh, creating this video right now uh, i only have seven but who knows maybe by the end i decide to add something else but i don't, I don't think so I think we're going to stick with these seven. Uh, some of them are the basic models, and then we're going to go on to um, more, more, not more complicated models, but models that have some other features or assumptions. So we're going to start with the economic order quantity. This is the basis. This is what started it all and to, to for, uh, we have to thank uh, for Harris, an engineer, um, in the early 1900s he was the one that came up with with this idea and the relationships between all the things all the variables that we're going to see uh, that affect inventory levels uh, and from there others develop uh, expanded the model and, and develop new models uh, to look at um, different situations um, with different uh, different constraints different assumptions so um, this is what um, what we're facing at a very very basic level all right uh at, at the most basic level uh economic order quantity and this is your first model this is this is the first model eoq okay economic order quantity uh looks at the world of inventory like this it's very simple but it's, it, it makes sense and it's actually it actually applies to many businesses so imagine you have a graph like this 
okay, where you have your orders, you know, just it's orders of inventory going across, right? And your inventory level going here on your vertical axis, right? From a, from a minimum to a maximum. And imagine you start your business, you open a business, brand new business, let's make it simple, let's say it's a bar and you have wine, beer, whatever, wine. Uh, so it is fair to, it's fair to assume that the, the first day when you open, you're going to have everything stocked up, right? You're going to, you're going to have all of the wine that you think you're going to need, all the shelves are full, uh, all the whatever, the storage, the, the <laughs> I don't know where you put the wine, but wherever you put the wine, it's all going to be all nice and full, right? So that's your maximum right there, okay? And you open your doors and you start selling wine. And little by little, you have less and less and less wine. Clearly, you're not going to order more wine, but let's say that you open at 9 a.m., you're not going to order more wine by 12, assuming you haven't sold it all, um, just because you sold a little bit of it. No, you had a maximum and you're using it up, right? You're going down this, this curve, this line here, but you didn't order right away. You're going to order more wine at some point. So in this, this, this first model, we assume that you don't order more wine until you reach zero. When you reach zero, you say, okay, now I need more wine. So you put an order in, you order more wine, and we are going to assume, and you'll see how everything plays out later, we're going to assume that you immediately get the new inventory. That's why this line shoots up straight up. Okay, immediately you receive your new inventory and you go back to your maximum level. We call this distance the, the size of your order. We're going to call that, well, is the economic order quantity. We're going to call that the Q star. All right? Good. So, and, and it's going to go on and on and on. So, this is just going to continue happening. You're going to start selling more wine, sell more wine, wine, and eventually you hit zero and put, you put a new order, and boom, your inventory is back up to maximum and so on and so forth. Um, if you want to think about this as your own kitchen, because you probably, some of us, uh, run our kitchens at home probably the same way, right? You go to the grocery store and you buy all the stuff that you need to fill your, 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 your fridge uh, and refrigerator, whatever it is, and you consume, 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 consume until you run out and then you go to the store and you fill it up again and so on. So that's kind of like what's going on here and it goes on and on and on right it never stops um so the big questions in economic order quantity and in any other inventory model for that matter is okay so how much do i need to order every time i order that q star that we just that i just showed you before let me oop, this q star right so how much should we order when do we need to order and why do we care? Because we need to minimize the cost of holding and ordering inventory. There is a cost to holding inventory and there is a cost to ordering inventory. The two things cost you money. Uh, this is where I, I ho hopefully some of you, at least myself, I also I always think of uh, Gordon Ramsay, the uh, the chef on TV, and uh, that does the uh, the Hell's Kitchen and the other shows, right? Where he goes into restaurants, and the one thing that he always he always does the same thing. He goes into the kitchen and he looks at the inventory, and he always finds uh, just thousands and thousands of dollars of old chicken and fish frozen, right? That's a cost. You had to pay for that. You had to finance that somehow. So, so number number one, you had to finance that somehow. And we are going to. I guess it's a good time to tell you that, in case in, in case you know me from a finance class or in, or or in case you have taken a finance class, we are not going to talk about working capital. It's it is it's related, but I'm going to stay away from accounting and finance. Okay, I'm just going to stick to uh, business science here. Um, 
there is a cause, right? You pay for those things, you finance those things probably with debt. We're going to assume debt. If it's a big corporation, big business, maybe you finance it through equity, whichever it is, doesn't matter. You, you are financing that. There's a cost of of just buying large quantities of inventory that, um, that you don't really need. Uh, and then there's a holding cost. Um, for the kitchen, it would be the electricity that, that, that it takes to run the refrigerator, or it, uh, it could also be uh, the, how, how things spoil, right? If there's a cost of holding things, because let's say that every day, 20% of your chicken goes bad just because of, of for whatever reason, for age and temperature, uh, that's a cost. Um, if you're talking about a big business, like a big manufacturing business, uh, say for example automobile uh, an automobile factory that needs tires well if you need to have a huge gigantic warehouses full of tires because you're going to need the tires for the cars there's a cost of renting that land of you know managing those 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 warehouses just to hold the tires right so you can't hold too much holding something costs a lot of money and also ordering um when you order something, that there's a cost to that. The cost could be very small, or the cost could be very, very big. And the cost varies just as you know, as, as a, just as much as the nature of the businesses that we're talking about. Um, in some cases, it could be something simple. It could be a, uh, it could be the time that it takes. This is the most simplistic uh, situation. The time that it will take to one of your staff members to write an email. To the uh, to you know whoever the supplier is and say hey hit me with another you know a thousand cases of beer whatever that is there is a cost to, uh, to that if that takes five minutes that is five minutes of that person's salary so that's the cost but there are other costs in other businesses bigger costs so for example if you're ordering fuel uh, if you're at a gas station if you're ordering fuel you're not gonna order a quarter of a tanker. That's silly because you're still paying for the entire tanker, uh, the entire truck to bring you that fuel, right? So you want to order an entire, uh, an entire tanker. So there's, there's, you see that the different, the different ordering cost that we cannot ignore. They're usually very small, but they could be very big. We need to you know, be aware of that. So this is what that, what, uh, um, for Harris in the 19, early 19, 1900s, um, this is what he was looking at. Um, he was looking at these two, so look at the, just, just these two lines for now, okay? The annual ordering cost and the annual inventory holding cost. So what he could see was that the higher the, uh, the order quantities, right? The higher the amount that you order with each inventory, the lower the cost. Again, because it makes sense. Think about this. Say that, uh, say that you need in a year a thousand cases of beer. If you order one case of beer, no, let's make it more. Uh, if you order every week, that's fifty-two weeks in a year, right? So instead of ordering one time a thousand cases, let's say that you order every week. That means that you need to put fifty-two orders. Uh, every week, so you're going to take a thousand and you're going to divide it by 52, right? You're going to do it right, and you're going to get smaller quantities of uh, of uh, beer, or wine, whatever I said. Um, but you're going to have a lot more orders, so you're going to have to pay for shipping on those orders, right? 52 shi 52 uh, shipments instead of one big shipment. So yes, the larger the quantity, the lower your your ordering cost. The, the, the smaller the quantity, the higher the cost um, per order, okay? So the curve looks like that. Now, on the other hand, we have annual inventory holding cost. And this is the cost of just having the stuff in your, you know, within your, within your reach instead of at the supplier. Uh, there's a cost to that. So it could be measured in dollars, it could be measured as a percentage, uh, it could be, uh, sometimes you need to finance it, so there will be a percentage rate because you, you know, you're taking a loan to finance that inventory. So the higher the, inv the order quantity, the amount of stuff that you're ordering, the higher, 
the higher the cost. The higher that quantity, the higher the cost. And that is pretty much uh, it's a straight line usually because like I said, it's, it's usually a factor of, it's, a, it's a, like a percentage or it's a, a dollar amount. So for example, it takes two do it takes 50 cents per pound of lobster, uh, uh, you know, to have it in, in your inventory. That's how much it costs to have the space, the energy, and the people to manage it. Uh, so that goes up higher and higher and higher. Okay, so those are the two curves. When we put them together, we find that there's a space where they're both equal, right there where I'm pointing, all right? It is at that point that your annual total cost, which is the, the, the cost of the inventory, uh, you know, the, the, the holding plus the ordering, right? How much it costs you to run this. When you put those two together, right? There is a place where the two are equal. It is at that point where your that that your total annual cost reaches reaches uh, reaches its minimum level. Okay, and I, I know my, my graph is not great there. I, I you know I did it by hand, uh, but it's at that point that your annual total cost reaches the lowest possible point, the minimum. That's the point that we're interested on. That is exactly what we're going to do in this chapter. We're always going to be aiming for that point, which is the annual, the, the minimum annual total cost um, to inventory. Some big assumptions of the EOQ. Uh, some of the assumptions may not make sense at the beginning. You might say like, oh, that's unrealistic, but they're actually pretty realistic in some cases uh, when you think about it a little bit. All right, so for example, we start with some big assumptions. Inventories are deterministic and constant. Well, uh, by the, what do we mean by deterministic? It means that uh, they're not random, that the amount that you have is not random. No, of course, it's, it's not random. It varies, but it's not random because you know uh, just about how much stuff you sell and how much stuff you need. All right, so there's nothing random about it. Uh, demand cannot be random. So, for example, just to give you an, just to give you an extreme example, say that you open a restaurant in Boston. Uh, would you expect the day that uh, would you expect to sell? Uh, let me think of a good number: seven million lobsters in a single day. No. Why not? Well, because there I there are seven million people in Massachusetts. Um, so there's no way that all seven million are gonna walk into your restaurant and get a and get a lobster. So it's not a random number. It's not any number. You don't. You have some idea. You have ranges, right? You may say, oh, you may, you know, you might think, oh, I think I'm gonna sell between, you know, 150 to 200 lobsters today. All right. So you see, it's not random. You know something about it. Um, so it's not completely true. But it's close enough, okay? You know something about it. Um, so that demand occurs at a constant rate. We, you know when that demand is coming. You have some kind of knowledge, uh, prior knowledge, about how much you expect to sell, um, how many customers are gonna come in, how much you expect, how much you expect to produce, etc. You know something about your business. And um, we're going to hold a lot of things also constant, like the order quantity, the cost of ordering, the cost of holding, and the cost of each thing that you order. We're going to hold those things constant um, at different levels of, uh, of, of amounts that you order, at different levels of inventory. What are we saying by that? What I'm saying is that um, whether you order you know, 20 lobsters for your restaurant or 50 lobsters for your restaurant, the, 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 the cost of ordering is going to be the same. So we're going to go back to the example. Let's say that, you know, the cost is, a, you know, one of you, somebody in your staff needs to make that call. It takes five minutes. Let's say that that's uh, $6. Let's just figure that, you know, just to say that it takes $6 to put an order. Well, it doesn't matter if you order 20 lobsters or 50 lobsters. It's still going to cost you six dollars for someone to make that call, um, and the same thing for inventory holding. For example, if it costs 
$2, uh, if it costs 50 cents per lobster to, to hold it, you know, to, to keep it uh, in, in your property, um, it's going to cost 50 cents for one lobster, but it's also going to cost 50 cents for the 50th lobster, right? Uh, all the lobsters are going to cost exactly the same uh, to hold. Now, on, of course, you're, you're adding more and more lobsters, so you, the cost is going up, but it's always 50 cents per lobster, okay? There are no uh, economies of scale or anything like that. Nothing, nothing changes in this basic model. There's going to be other models where we're going to... Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, uh, relax some of these uh, variables, all right? We are going to assume in EOQ, the basic model, we're going to assume that there are no shortages and there are no back orders. There's none of that, all right? You're going to sell exactly what you need to sell. You're not going to have any leftover. All customers are going to be satisfied, etc. Um, the lead time, the lead time is a concept, this concept, we're going to see it over and over. The lead time is the amount of time that it takes between the time that you put the order in and the time that you get the, uh, the, the inventory, the, the order. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to assume that that is always a constant, that you know it and it's constant. It doesn't change just because the, you order more or you order less. And we're also going to assume that you know at any given time, you know your inventory level. Okay, for whatever reason, you have a system or uh, it's something very simple because you can actually just eyeball it. You can just turn around and look at it, you know, and uh, you can count the number of, of, of bottles of wine or whatever that is. But you know exactly how much is in inventory. So these are the basic formulas for EOQ. And you're going to be answering the following questions. Always pre they're always pretty much going to be the same questions. How much? do I need to order every time I order? How many times do I need to order per year? What's the time between the orders, what we call the cycle time? When do I order? And what is my total annual cost? Which remember, this is what we're trying to minimize. This is what we care about. Um, and it has two components, remember, is the holding and the ordering. The top equation, how much? That's the main equation. That's the one that is going to drive everything. And uh, that's the one that is going to vary the most. Uh, this is what we call EOQ. This, this is it. This is the, this is the, uh, the famous uh, equation EOQ, which we call Q star, um, and is equal to the square root of two times your demand multiplied by the cost of ordering divided by the cost of holding. Okay? That's what's going to give you that amount that you need to order, okay, is going to give you. Let me go back. It's going to give you that Q star. Like how much do I, how much do you put in for an order? Let me go back. The rest of them are actually. Um, so 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 for Harris, you know, the, the the engineer came up with this equation. The rest of them we could have come up with them ourselves. Uh, so how many times in a year do you need to order? Well, that's simple. Because if I know how you know my demand, and then now and now that I know my Q star, if I divide my demand, my year demand by the Q star, is going to give me the amount of times that in a year that I'm going to have to order, right? And uh, and everything else, the working days divided by the orders, is the same thing. We could have come up with with that ourselves. We're going to look at each of them. All right, in an example that is. So here's an example. Parts parameters. So this is what we're told. Uh, they cost fifty dollars. Okay, so so Bart <laughs> pays fifty dollars per parameter. Okay, so that's going to be your cost. That's how much it costs to 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 buy these parameters, and then you know you sell them to the public. Uh, you expect about five hundred. You you expect to sell about five hundred a year. That's going to be your demand. The uh, the cost of ordering every time you put an order is going to cost eighty dollars, and that includes everything: the shipping, the putting the order, everything else that you need. You know, maybe get some some licenses or get some 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 lawyers to review the order, whatever it is. Uh, well, if if we if you had lawyers reviewing this, it would be a lot more than eighty dollars. But you know what I mean? Um, it's going to cost you twenty percent uh, of that fifty dollars 
to hold that inventory. So there, that's the cost of holding the inventory, 20%. The lead time, it's 60. We're going to call that M. And we're going to assume that you're a business that is open 300 days um, a year, uh, which equals six days per week. This is where, in many cases, this is where you're going to get lost here with the times. Okay, you're going to be like, is it days, is it weeks, is it years? Um, it takes practice. All right, so you jump to the formulas. EOQ, how much? So that remember, remember this, right? How much? Two times D times CO over CH. So two dollars, I'm sorry, no, sorry, two times 500, which is your demand, right? I got it from here, times 80, which is the cost per order, divided by, now here there's a little manipulation because it's 20% cost of inventory, so it's 20% of $50. So you do 20% of 50, that's your CH, that's the cost of holding, and you get uh, 89.44, units or approximately 90. Obviously here you need to round up uh, because you can't order uh, 89, 89 and a half barometers, right? So you need to, you know, uh, 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 do an approximation to 90. All right. So now you know that the, 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 the perfect amount to order Q star is 90. Okay, so if you're going to sell 500 of these things and every time you order, you're going to order 90 at a time, 500 over 90 gives you 5.56 orders per year. So now you know how many times you're going to have to order per year. That translates into the following. There are three, uh, the cycle time, the time between receiving and ordering again, right? So it's like the cycle of the inventory. How long is the inventory in your system? Think about this. If you're working 300 days, right? and you put 5.56 orders every year, that means that there are every 54 days, you put an order. And that's the, that, so now you know how often, how frequently you're gonna do this uh, in both, uh, both uh, size of, uh, of inventory and in, in terms of time, every 54 days. So, what is the optimal order point? At what point in, uh, in, in your inventory, at what point do you need to order? And I'm sorry, because I, did, I, did, I don't know why I didn't do the math here, but that equals 100. So when that, and what is your total, uh, your total cost if you follow this approach? So now, let me just move that out of the way, okay. So to do the total cost, you're gonna take your holding cost and you're gonna multiply by the quantity divided by two and then you're going to add the ordering cost multiply by the uh, by the demand divided by Q the quantity so it's going to be 0.2 which, which is at 20 percent right that's the cost of um, the cost of holding 0.2 times 50 which is the amount um, we're doing basically what's up here as well, right? Uh, 50 is the cost to you of these parameters. Uh, you're gonna multiply that by 90 over two, and then you're going to add 80, which is the cost uh, of ordering, times 500, which is the total demand, divided by 90. Notice these two are, are different, okay? In this case, the uh, EOQ, the Q star is on the, um, uh, the, num the numerator, and in this case is in the denominator. denominator. So it, it swaps. Uh, and you get a number of $894.43. So if you did this right, if we did this right, uh, if we try to have more inventory um, at, you know, in, in hand, or if we try to make bigger orders but less orders instead of ordering 5.56 times instead of order you know we we order only two times and if we order two times was well, the math is easy because it would be if you order two times you would only order 250 at a time right because that would give you 500 parameters which is your demand so if you did if you did that you will end up with a higher total cost remember we are trying to reach this point the minimum annual total cost, and that's exactly 
what we just did here. And I have some good news for you. You don't have to do all of this manually. I have actually prepared an Excel file that does all of this for you. So basically what, what I'm doing in this presentation, uh, in, in series of presentations, I am just showing you where these things come from and I'm going to show you how to use the Excel so you can quickly uh, get the answers. So I'm going to jump to the Excel file. Let me just remember. Okay, so it's $50 per parameter, uh, 500 demand, 80 per order, 20% cost, 60 days, 300 days. Okay, so let's go to the Excel. Here's the Excel. So the second tab on my Excel is called EOQ. Has a spreadsheet here that is going to do all of the math for you. Look, I even put some notes here for you. So you know where these things come from and you can relate to the uh, to the PowerPoint. So annual demand, 500. I'm going to make this all be yellow. So you see, this is these are my inputs, 500. Ordering cost, it was 80. It will cost $80 to order. The annual inventory holding rate, this, by the way, this Excel is it's uh, it's made to calculate uh, holding cost as a percentage. Okay, in some cases you may somebody is going to tell you that oh the holding cost is one dollar per um, per per unit. This Excel wouldn't work, right? Because this is based on a percentage, like twenty percent. Um, you will have to create another one. Uh, cost per unit is fifty. And we work 300 days a year. We sell 300, 300 days uh, a year. And the lead time between orders is 60. Okay. Look, if you look down here below, you have all your numbers calculated for you. So 89.44 was our EOQ. Uh, and $894.43, that's our total cost. That's, remember, that is the lowest possible, that is the minimum annual total cost uh, for our inventory. Uh, and we have some other data here as well, average inventory, maximum inventory, uh, and the reorder point is calculated for us as well, 100. Everything is here in this Excel spreadsheet, all right? Excellent. So, um, Oh, just a little example. You know, if we if we take that chart and we and we and we and we chart Bart's situation, that's what we're saying. That that point right there, which occurs, I have a ninety, but as you know, is eighty nine point something something something. Um, that's the minimal total cost, which is eight hundred ninety four dollars and forty three cents. That's uh, that's the way we optimize the inventory for this business. All right, uh, I'm going to stop here, and on the next video, we're going to look at a different model. Thank you.